this really was a political operation from the get-go. I would say I was not satisfied uh, with the answers provided today. We think there's a lot more to this. This is a infringement on the First Amendment that this investigation is going on. He was a private citizen when he wrote this letter. That was Louisiana Congressman Mike Johnson and New York Congressman Daniel Goldman on former CIA Director John Brennan and his closed-door testimony yesterday. Brennan sitting for a four-hour interview where he was asked about signing the letter with 50 other intelligence officials who called the Biden laptop Russian disinformation right before the 2020 election. Former DNI James Clapper expected to sit before the Weaponization Subcommittee next week. Joe, your reaction? Uh, for, first of all, Dan Goldman is, is, is so sanctimonious. I mean, this is ridiculous. These people who signed this letter weren't signing because, uh, you know, they, they were an usher at church. They weren't signing because they were a, a, a Met fan or a Yankee fan. No, they were signing because they were formerly uh, officials within the, the intelligence community who were using their former position to justify what they knew to be false on paper. Uh, the fact that we're now seeing emails that prove this was a campaign operation really should gall the American people uh, who were just told point blank over and over during the 2020 election that this is uh, complete nonsense, this is Russian dis disinformation, uh, and we should put it to bed. The other group of people I think we should be really concerned with right now are the media, because the other networks, they use this document as a way to shut up guests who had any alternative opinions, any alternative voices on any of the other networks. Now to see them not even covering this, uh, I, yeah. I actually have the same, uh, you know, venting as Byron Donald who said, I'm giving you Pulitzer Prize winning material. Why aren't you covering this? It's, it's really shameful, Joe. You're absolutely right. And this is the same. It's a do-over of the Russia collusion uh, lie. John Brennan was pushing that story, and the media went with it, and uh, the whole story went viral. They still have not uh, come up with truthfulness uh, on that story. They will not admit how wrong they were. A new Rasmussen survey finds 69 percent of voters think that Reports on the Biden family's influence peddling is a serious scandal compared to 26 percent who say it's no big deal. 63 percent of voters say that Biden likely did profit from foreign decisions in an alleged pay-for-play scheme during his time as vice president, Cheryl. Look, this is all coming out now, and people are understanding what this guy's been doing for the last 40 years. Yeah, and, and now the work, and I think this is going to be the, kind of the next tranche of this from uh, from Comer and from Jim Jordan, is going to be unwinding the LLCs and doing further investigations into the LLCs. You know, this is how business works. You can come up with five LLCs, you know, spend a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand dollars and form one, and you've got a company that's very difficult to trace back. So, you know, it's not going to be easy. You know, I mean, now the American people are saying, hey, look, we're, you've got our attention. Something is was happening here uh, you know when, when Joe Biden was vice president Biden was you know was he making money off of his name was his family making money off of his name and his powerful position at the time as vice president now it's going to be up to the forensic accountants uh, to, to go into those LLCs and to kind of again follow the money but remember a lot of this came from from the Bank of America records that James Comer actually uh, you know pulled and once those bank records once you have it in front of you you can't deny what you're yeah. seeing. But again, they're going to have well, to prove this and people want people want those numbers to be clear here. Well, well, what we have seen in terms of proof is money from foreign agents going to these LLCs and then distributed to Biden family members. Francis, we know now that James Comer has been able to get bank records from four banks and that's where, where he came up with $10 million that the Biden family has taken in. He told me that he's got eight more banks to, to go through. So what we know of in terms of this $10 million that the Biden family has taken in from foreigners, uh, that's only from four banks. He's got eight more banks to go through. No, that's incredible. The number's probably only going to grow. And how brilliant of him to go to the banks with a subpoena before he went to the Biden family with a subpoena, because the Biden family would have just fought the subpoena where the banks are turning these things over. The other thing is, how could these guys think that the truth wasn't going to come out? And furthermore, if we look at the his history of presidential scandals... Some of them had to do with extramarital affairs or women or, or, or different things like that. But when we compare those scandals to the national security risk we now have with this scandal, I just don't think that they're quite comparable. Yeah, and it's just incredible that the media will not cover it. There are serious national security issues around this. 
And that's why it's just a, a scandal, Joe, that you brought up, the media, not, not reporting it. They're not reporting on the border either, by the way. No, right, right. So, so we see no coverage on, on things that they really wanted to cover, namely that letter, by the way. They really wanted to cover that letter in 2020. Uh, <laughs> they wanted to cover the border when Trump was building a wall. Now we see nothing. Right. Uh, I, I actually want to find those 31 percent of people out there who are saying this Biden scandal is not really a scandal. I, I want to ask them, what is the Biden family business if it's not trading influence and peddling uh, the, their, their father or their grandfather's right. name? I mean, are they, are they, do they have an ice cream truck? Uh, are, are they uh, drilling for oil? No, of course not. Uh, that's why yeah. it's so significant to get a little bit of pushback from some of the other networks that you reference uh, to see if there can be uh, any digging. And that's exactly what James Comer said. There is no business here that we could find. We can't identify any product, any reason for all these Biden families to be getting money from these LLCs, which got the money from Farner. Nine of the 10 people uh, that we've identified that have very good knowledge with respect to the Bidens, they're, they're one of three things, Maria. They're either currently in court, they're currently in jail, or they're currently missing. They fear for their lives. Not only are the Biden lawyers and the Biden White House intimidating them, the media is trying to intimidate and discredit them. This is very serious accusations here. That was House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer on Sunday Morning Futures with me yesterday revealing that the White House is intimidating informants in his investigation into the Biden family's influence peddling schemes. Meanwhile, a new report finds several of the 51 former intelligence officials who signed that letter trying to discredit the Biden laptop donated to either President Biden, his 2020 campaign, or other Democrats. So the whole thing is so disturbing. Monica, I want to just point out that Marjorie Taylor Greene says that the whistleblower for Joe Biden is not missing. But yesterday, it wasn't the whistleblower who James Comer said is missing. He said that the informant is missing. So we're still trying to get more information on where, what are the whereabouts of the informant in this important investigation and who specifically in the White House is intimidating potential witnesses. Your reaction? It's just incredible, Maria. I saw your interview yesterday with Chairman Comer, and if what he is saying is true, and we have no, you know, no, no reason to doubt what he is saying here, but everything that he laid out indicates that the Biden White House, the Biden attorneys, are essentially operating as an organized crime syndicate, putting pressure on witnesses, intimidating them into silence, and, and getting them to back off. Look, all they are trying to do here is excavate the depth of corruption of Joe Biden and his family. And they've made tremendous headway in terms of hard evidence showing that perhaps the sitting president of the United States as vice president, and God knows what he's doing now, um, was engaged in a criminal bribery scheme. That's what we're talking about here. And so to really put the pressure and muscle on these witnesses is completely unacceptable and outrageous. And this is also something that now needs to be investigated, and I hope they go down that avenue. Yeah, I mean, Chris, one of the more troubling areas of this is the media's response to this. I mean, Chairman Comer said uh, that uh, they have evidence that Joe Biden, when he was vice president, was involved in a quid pro quo with a foreign company in exchange for foreign aid. He kept saying in the Obama administration, I'm told, that he wanted to be in charge of foreign aid which is just extraordinary. These are some of the most severe and serious allegations ever leveled at a president. And Chris, the mainstream media will not report any of it. Yeah, it's the old, uh, if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's there to hear it, does it make a sound? And that's the big concern right now, is the fact that we've got a situation that's, that's taking place, okay, where, again, media's missing. No one wants to follow up on this stuff. And I'm afraid that the general public is going to get almost uh, corruption fatigue when it comes to this. He mentioned yesterday in your interview, fantastic interview, was the fact that how long this is going to take. And I think the longer that this drags out, little by little, if we can't get to these informants or witnesses, the worse off it's going to be for the Republicans. Um, and again, dragging this out, good for Biden, quite frankly. 
Yeah, because the DOJ is going to just try to slow walk this as they've slowed walk so many other investigations, Monica, like the Russia collusion story. Yes, exactly. And again, this points to the depth of corruption throughout all of our institutions, Maria, but in particular, our premier law enforcement agencies like the DOJ and FBI. They have long been protecting Joe Biden, certainly Hunter and the rest of his family. This is more evidence of this. And to your point and Chris's point, when you enjoy the protection of the propaganda press in this country, you can literally get away with criminal bribery like this and so much more. It's disgusting. Really? Really disturbing. Joining me right now is Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett. He's a member of the House Oversight and Foreign Affairs Committees. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. A lot to discuss with you. I want to first get your take on your investigation, uh, you and James Comer, into the uh, affairs of the Biden family and their business deals. Do you know the whereabouts of the informant? No, ma'am, I do not. Is he missing? Apparently, yes. Um, uh, according to Chairman Comer, you know they, um, the the telling thing about this is that 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 our Federal Bureau of Investigation and our Justice Department have basically just turned a blind eye to all of this, and now it's come down to the point where um, Speaker McCarthy is has to have a a one on one meeting with Director Ray over just the 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 way that they've handled this and bungled this thing from the start. You know they. They went after George Santos, and as I've stated, he's relatively small potatoes. Yet, when you have over 10 million reasons uh, to look at this White House and what's going on, and, and corruption, and and influence peddling, you even have a report that they've issued apparently, but they are, are not very forthcoming with it as well. This is just extraordinary, um, as you know, Congressman, and we are trying to get to the bottom of it. Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, said uh, she actually told the uh, Gateway Pundit that the whistleblower is not missing, but that's not what James Comer said. James Comer said it was the informant who's missing, not the whistleblower. So uh, is, is, I mean, does the FBI know that the, that the informant is missing? Have you had any information from the FBI uh, in terms of whether or not they're going to look into this? Uh, this is Again, stunning, I think. Yes, ma'am. Again, what's telling is that the FBI doesn't give a rip. They're not. Uh, they just basically uh, sent a flippant return to us about our inquiries into this whole mess, and it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. You know, you've got unbelievable. You got the, the then pre Vice President Biden was lecturing the people of Romania of, about their their ethics and corruption. At the same time, his son and his uh, business associates were taking over a million dollars from a Romanian who was basically under investigation for corruption. You know, it's an arrogance that, that goes beyond belief. I've said that when they went to mob school, I think they were asleep during money laundering because they have obviously, you can follow the money. The money comes from Chinese nationals, from Romanians. It flows into business accounts. It, uh, it And it's very clear. They set up these LLCs um, after after Joe Biden was in, was was vice president, and the money flows to them to nine family members. You've got grandkids involved in this, the minors. I mean, it, the whole thing is ridiculous, Maria. And it, and and for the Democrats and the national media and the FBI to apparently be in collusion together on this thing is is even more telling. So we we've got a lot of work to do. It, it's absolutely stunning. These are the most serious allegations leveled at a president ever. And the mainstream media just will not cover it. Congressman, you just said that this had to get to a one-on-one -on -one meeting between Kevin McCarthy and the head of the FBI, Christopher Wray. Has that meeting taken place yet, or is that meeting uh, ahead? No, ma'am. I believe it's happening this Thursday. And I would, um, I, I was surprised it took so long for him to get get to it. Um, uh, uh, Commissioner Wray, you know, they've they've just. Given us, as we say, the Heisman, they've, they've pushed us off everywhere we've gone. And this is another example of that very, very same thing. Well, what is the thinking in the Oversight Committee if the FBI doesn't budge? I mean, look, you know that James Comer has sent out a subpoena. He wants that document that he says he knows exists that is actually proof that Joe Biden was part of a bribery scheme. But the FBI is pushing back, blowing off the subpoena, saying it's not going to release it. So what 
what levers do you all have to get to the truth? We have the power of the purse, Maria. Um, the Congress is, has, is, is this country's checkbook, and we can start cutting funds to the FBI. They've, you know, they've bungled so many cases as of late, and they continue to do so, and their arrogance is such that I think the, um, uh, you know, it's not the rank and file FBI agents. They're generally very patriotic Americans, and um, I know many of them in my area. And they are hardworking, patriotic folks. It's this top level of arrogance that we've we've seen, and it is the swamp. It does exist, and and that's what we'll have to do. We'll have to start cutting their checkbook a little bit just to get them to the table, if that's what it takes. And I'm for that because they have um, they they've just not done their duty. Well, this this, this is all extraordinary. Um, you know, you have confirmed to us what James Comer told me yesterday, that the informant is missing. He's gone missing. We have no idea why. You have confirmed what James Comer told me yesterday, that the FBI and White House uh, are, are obstructing justice. And you're telling me that there's a one-on-one -on -one meeting uh, with Kevin McCarthy and Christopher Wray so that the House can actually uh, push back on the FBI and uh, its, its lack of curiosity and its lack of work on any of this. So we're going to be following it. You're talking about arrogance. What about the arrogance of nonstop spending? Uh, we had 40-year high inflation. The president says he's going to re resume these debt ceiling talks with the House Speaker tomorrow. Here's what the president said. Watch this. It's never as good to characterize a negotiation in the middle of a negotiation. I remain optimistic because I'm a congenital optimist. But I really think there's a desire on their part as well as ours to reach agreement. I mean, we don't know what he's saying, Congressman. You voted against McCarthy's debt limit bill. Um, you were among just a few to vote against it. What was the biggest problem for you? We just can't keep spending money, even the, even though the Republicans cut several, um, just trillions of dollars. We still. Um, have 1.5 added 1.5 trillion dollars to the debt. The Democrats and the Republicans have got to get real about this thing. Uh, we are we are spiraling out of control. China, our debt, and our education. Those are the th three things we need to be focusing on. China controls a lot of our debt and apparently some of our education. Um, but our debt is is something that we should be able to to uh, get together and say, hey, we've, we've got we've got to prior toward, prioritize the spending, and we're not doing that. Too many pet projects, too many special things. Um, and, and two, we need to look at the Pentagon. Pentagon comes back and they have billions of dollars that they can't account for in their audits. There should be no sacred cows, yet there seems to always be one. And at, at some point, Maria, we got to sit down and do this or we are damaging uh, our credit in this country, if it, if beyond belief, and and so it, we used to say we're borrowing borrowing money from our kids, we're borrowing money from our great grandkids. This is a disservice is, to our country. That is really sad, and you make a great point that China holds all of this debt. Real quick, Congressman. So basically, what you want is you want a lot lower spending levels. Is that what you want? That would get you to a yes on a bill. A hundred percent, Maria. I need you okay. sitting at the negotiating table. <laughs> Congressman, thank you. It's always a pleasure to see you. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Tim Burchett. Thank you, ma'am. We'll yes, see you soon. Thank you, sir. <laughs> President Biden and his Secretary of Homeland Security uh, named the biggest threat facing America right now. No, it's not China. No, it's not the wide open border and the drug cartels. Uh, and no, it's not even Russia. Here's what they claim is the biggest threat to America right now. The most dangerous terrorist threat to our homeland is white supremacy. And I'm not saying this because I'm at a black HBCU. You know, um, in the terrorism context, domestic violent extremism is uh, our greatest threat uh, right now. Individuals are driven to violence because of ideologies of hate, uh, anti-government sentiments, false narratives, personal grievances. Uh yeah, I'm perplexed as well. Joining me right now is Newsweek opinion editor, the host of the Josh Hammer podcast, Josh Hammer. Josh, your reaction uh, to the president and the Homeland Security Secretary saying that it is white supremacy as the number one threat in terms of terrorism to America. 
Maria, I mean, this is just profoundly cynical stuff. I mean, you know, Joe Biden might be claiming that he is not saying this because he is speaking at a Howard University commencement speech, but he obviously is saying it precisely because he is speaking at a Howard University commencement speech. In many ways, his decision to kind of give this line in front of a historical black university on their commencement day is kind of more broadly indicative of the broader kind of Democratic Party strategy, which is basically to kind of just do this intersectional coalition where you go into kind of various racial ethnic, national identity, minority groups, and try to just give crumbs. They're basically just trying to give crumbs to various perceived aggrieved interest groups in the run-up to the 2024 presidential election. And, you know, if you're Joe Biden and you're looking at the polling, you know, it probably actually makes some degree of sense. So, you know, a shockingly high percentage of Democrats say that they are not enthusiastic about Joe Biden's re-election bid. A shockingly high percentage of Democrats say they simply do not want Joe Biden to run for re-election. But if you go back to the 2020 Democratic Party primaries, it was actually black voters, especially in South Carolina in the third in the nation primary, that actually saved Joe Biden's floundering campaign. You know, he finished in fifth place in New Hampshire. He did not win the Iowa caucus. It was, it was actually black voters in South Carolina that, that, that really kind of disproportionately are the reason why we have Joe Biden as president today. So that's kind yeah. of my read here. He's really just trying to fire up his black face. But, but you know, to your point, Maria, it's obviously, it's absurd. There was an Afghan terrorist who was caught kind of going over our post-Title 42 wide open, porous southern border right. literally yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. So there are so many other threats here. To do so is deeply cynical, but we should unfortunately expect nothing less from the current Democratic Party and President Joe Biden. Yeah, and for all the reasons that you just laid out, uh, Douglas Schoen is out with a, an op-ed in the Journal this morning saying, well, how about Michelle Obama if uh, Joe Biden uh, doesn't run or, or uh, fails to complete this campaign by the presidency? Former CIA director, meanwhile, John Brennan, uh, spoke under oath uh, to the uh, Intelligence and uh, the Judiciary Committee last week. Uh, Mike Turner is uh, taking depositions on why the 51 spy who lied signed their name on that letter uh, that suggested that the Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. And Mike Turner joined me yesterday, the head of the Intelligence Committee, to talk about what this administration is doing uh, in, in terms of uh, Americans versus the real threats outside, like China. Here's what the chairman of the Intelligence Committee told me yesterday. As China had tries to get a foothold in our country itself, um, the FBI, the, the, the administration, you know, they're, they've been more interested in saying that Americans are a threat to America than that China is a threat to America. And, and here's what he said about the testimony that he's been getting from these folks. He took a deposition from Brennan and Clapper, and he's going through the 51 spies who signed that letter. Watch. To these people signed on to a letter without any evidence whatsoever uh, that there was any Russian inter intervention or that, that this was Russia misinformation uh, solely for the purposes of helping Joe Biden in his debate. We had uh, uh, Brennan, the former uh, CIA director, who, along with uh, Clapper, the head of the ODNI, was you know, one of the big perpetrators of the Russia hoax against the Trump administration, who admitted in his deposition, well, this was just political. Well, what that translates to is that this was just a lie. So, Josh, there you go. They had to admit it under oath. They just wanted to help Biden win the debate. And that's exactly what Biden did. He used the, the, the 51 signatures as proof that Biden's son, Hunter Biden, did not do anything wrong and that he has no knowledge of any business deals. I, I mean, Maria, I mean, like, what does it say about the state of the intelligence community? What does it say about the state of the deep state apparatus more broadly that 51 of the nation's highest, most decorated spies were willing to sign on to a letter with no substantive underpinning whatsoever, simply because a couple of Biden campaign operatives, who one of whom, but by the way, happens to be the current secretary of state, simply literally said in a, in a smoking gun document that I hope sees the light of day soon, literally said, simply because they wanted Joe Biden to have a talking point in a debate with Donald Trump when Trump inevitably brought up. And by the way, that's actually exactly what happened. When this came up in the second or third presidential debate, when Donald Trump kind of voiced it, Joe Biden said, oh, you know, 50 of the top uh, IC spies have said this is pure Russian disinformation. I mean, you know, talk about circular logic. You know, talk about kind of, you know, a fallacy of logical reasoning. You literally get people to lie, and then you use the lie to kind of swat down your opponent's debate tactic. The whole thing just stinks to high heaven, frankly.
frankly. It utterly yeah. and completely stinks to high heaven. And, you know, I think that you're totally correct, and, and, and Mike Turner is correct to kind of take it back to the origins of the Russia collusion delusion yeah. going back to Michael Flynn in 2016, 20, all this kind of pieces together here. But, you know, from a constitutionalist perspective here, you know, we need to see Antony Blinken, I, I, frankly, impeached. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think it is long overdue to see articles of impeachment filed against him here. He is obviously the guy at the center of this. We're not really hearing yeah. enough about Antony Blinken himself, I think. Well, that's true. And, uh, you know, we're going to see uh, potentially a testimony from him because I know that the House Oversight uh, wants to speak with him, as, as does Judiciary. Meanwhile, explosive charges yesterday. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer joined me and said that the White House is intimidating informants and whistleblowers. And one of the informants may be missing. Here's what he told me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures. Incredible. Watch. Nine of the ten people uh, that we've identified that have very good knowledge with respect to the Bidens, they're, they're one of three things, Maria. They're either currently in court, they're currently in jail, or they're currently missing. They fear for their lives. Not only are the Biden lawyers and the Biden White House intimidating them, the media is trying to intimidate and discredit them. Now, Congressman Tim Burchett, who's also on the Oversight Committee, was with me earlier in the program. He confirmed to me that the informant is indeed missing, Josh. This is chilling. Yeah, so, you know, I watched your interview with Congressman Burchett. You know, I think that the congressman is exactly right, by the way. So if you kind of look at the checks that the legislative branch has on the executive branch, the subpoena power we might think of as a mini check. But, you know, the two kind of greater checks that the Constitution's framers gave to Article One gave to the Congress are the power of the purse, which Congressman Burchett, I think, accurately, uh, accurately alluded to, and then also what I just alluded to in the context of Antony Blinken, which is the impeachment power. So, you know, th those are those are the basic tools right now at Congress's disposal when the executive branch is, is being completely uncooperative, as the case currently appears to be here. But, you know, look, if you, if you kind of step back from the minutia a little bit and try to uh, analyze this from a slightly broader perspective, I mean, Maria, what is actually going on here? I, I mean, you and I both know exactly what is going on here, which which is, this is Hunter Biden, who obviously is at the epicenter of all this. Hunter Biden and, you know, the rest of kind of the Biden crime family, James Biden, the brothers, the uncles, you know, uh, but Hunter really in particular here. And what they are doing, what everyone kind of at the top of the IC community with the White House, the FBI, Chris Ray, what they are all doing right now is they are pulling out all the stops imaginable to hide the president of the United States' personal family from getting possible public scrutiny. And it's all in the backdrop, obviously, of Biden's re-election campaign, which is already floundering. The polls are already not good. We saw that Washington Post ABC poll just last week. The last thing that Biden and Kamala Harris want is yet another headache, yet another episode with Hunter Biden here. So, you know, that is, that is what is going on here. But, you know, again, to kind of get back to your interview with Congress and Burchett, you know, I think that, that Congress would be remiss if they did not consider you know, full and forthright use of the entirety of all the tools the Constitution's framers gave them, and that very much yeah. includes threats to defund agencies and ultimately the impeachment power, if need be. It looks like that's all they've got, Josh. We'll keep watching that and keep a spotlight on all of it. Thanks very much for weighing in. Josh Hammer joining us this morning.